Hey there, it's Aviva from Elementor. Today I'll show you how to use Elementor's Hotspot widget to create interactive designs for your website. Hotspots offer a creative way to display and highlight information in a highly visual and playful manner that will be sure to engage your visitors. And with Elementor's customization options, you can create varied hotspot designs without writing a single line of code. So let's get started. For this tutorial, we'll create this interactive hotspot design for a website about wines. From the Elementor editor, I'll go ahead and delete the existing hotspot widget by right-clicking Delete, so we can recreate it from scratch. In the Widgets panel, search for the hotspot widget and drag it into the content area. Great! The first thing you'll see is a placeholder image and a default hotspot. Clicking the hotspot displays a tooltip. Beginning with the image, click to select an image to use as the background of the hotspot and insert it. You can select the image size and alignment. Moving on to the hotspot section, let's set up the hotspot animation. You can see here that you have several options to choose from. I'll select Soft Beat. By default, all the hotspots load at the same time on page load, but if you'd like them to load one by one, toggle Sequenced Animation On and set the sequence duration in milliseconds. We'll get to preview this at the end of the tutorial after we've set everything up. The hotspot widget starts you off with one hotspot. To add more hotspots, you can click to duplicate any one, or click Add Item to add a new hotspot. Delete unneeded hotspots, like this. Click to expand the hotspot item, where you'll see its settings. There are two tabs, one for the hotspot's content and one for its position. There are several ways to design the layout of your hotspot. You can leave it on the default dot, as you see here, Use a text label, a label together with an icon, or an icon on its own. To use a label, type in your text here. To add an icon to the text label, either upload your own SVG file, or you can use one from the icon library. Just search for an icon, select it, and click Insert. You'll then see settings for icon position and icon spacing. For our design, I'll delete the label text to display just the icon. Next, you can set a custom hotspot size by setting a minimum width and height. Note that this setting will apply only to this specific hotspot, and only if there is text or an icon in the hotspot, and not with a default hotspot. We will set the hotspot size in the style section instead since we want the same size to apply to each hotspot. The hotspot can be linked to an external source or to a tooltip. To link the hotspot to another web page, enter a URL in the field below, or click the Dynamic Tags icon to link to dynamic content, such as a pop-up. Edit the link options here. To link to a tooltip, as we will do for our example, leave the link field blank. Because each hotspot is connected to its own tooltip, the individual tooltip content is located in the hotspot settings. So I'll go ahead and add tooltip text here. You can use the built-in formatting options or add HTML in the text tab. Okay, let's check out the position tab. You can position your hotspot anywhere you'd like by using the horizontal and vertical orientation settings. You can also drag the offset sliders to visualize the location or type in a precise value. And switching to responsive mode, you can see the hotspot position is fully responsive. The general tooltip settings are controlled below in the tooltip section. However, settings for a specific tooltip are controlled from here by toggling the custom tooltip properties on. 
Here, you can change this tooltip's position. The default position for desktop is great for this design, but this setting will come in handy when we make responsive edits a bit later. We'll adjust the minimum width later from the style settings to apply it to all the tooltips. Toggle on to wrap the tooltip text. Okay, great. The first hotspot's content settings are all set. Let's duplicate it to create a second identical hotspot. All our settings have copied over, so we only need to update the tooltip text and hotspot position. We'll repeat this process for the third hotspot. OK, great. Now expand the tooltips section. By default, the tooltips will be aligned to the bottom of the hotspot, but you can change this. Just keep in mind that changes to the tooltip position from this area will only apply to hotspots that do not have the custom tooltip position settings applied. Next, choose the tooltip trigger. As you've already seen, the default trigger is set to display on click. You can also change the trigger to none to always display your tooltips, or hover so they show when moused over, as I'll do for this design. Below that, you have several options for the animation, as well as a setting for the animation duration. OK, great. We've completed the content settings, and we're ready to move on to the styling. You can adjust the width of your background image, as well as the maximum width and height. You can also adjust its opacity and use CSS filters to add some interesting effects to your background image. You have several border options for the image. You can also add a shadow. Next, we'll style the hotspot. You can change the color of the hotspot from here. I'll leave it on the default. To change the size of the hotspot, drag the slider or type in a value. If you're using a label for the hotspot, you can adjust the typography and the minimum width and height of the background box. You can change the box color, expand it by adding padding, and round the corners by adjusting the border radius. You can also add a shadow. In our design, we don't have a background color. So I'll change the color setting to transparent. Our hotspots are coming along, and now all that's left to style is the tooltip. Set the text color and typography. You can change the text alignment. I'll leave it as is. Here is where I'll update the tooltip box width. If you recall, we did not adjust the width in any of the custom tooltip settings, so this setting will apply to each of the tooltips. Next, I'll add some padding around the text. You can change the background box color, but I'll leave mine on the default. You can also add a border radius and shadow to the tooltip box if you'd like. OK, these tooltips are looking great. Now all that's left is to make sure the hotspots are optimized for responsive viewing. Use the keyboard shortcut, Command or Control, Shift, M, to enter responsive mode. The hotspots are perfect on tablet, but this tooltip gets cut off. So let's adjust the custom positioning for this item. I'll go back to Content and select Hotspot, Item 2, and change the position of this tooltip to right. I'll also go to the general tooltip content settings and set the trigger to click. Since there's no hover on tablet. Looks good. Now I'll switch to mobile. 
It's inherited the tablet settings, so the custom position still works here, but the tooltips get cut off. Let's make some adjustments to the styling. I'll change the width and the padding. Perfect. And now, for the moment of truth, go back to desktop view and preview. Cool! The hotspots appear in sequenced animation with elegant tooltips that display when hovered over. And there you have it! You now know how to create and style your own hotspots. Whether you use them playfully or in a more practical manner, I know your creativity will shine through. How will you use the hotspot widget? Let me know in the comments below. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Thanks for watching. For more tutorials, subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notifications bell.